My name is Donald Tan. I am from Singapore and I work at the Singapore National Eye Centre. I've been practicing ophthalmology since 1986, so that's 26 years. DALK is a fantastically elegant procedure, but it has significant challenges. Uh, the two main problems really to solve doubt surgery is firstly, how can you best get the big bubble in a predictable manner as often as possible? And secondly, how do you not rupture Desmase membrane while you're doing the procedure? Those are the two key elements to successful doubt with the big bubble. You've got to get as close to Desmase as possible without perforating Desmase. I used to use a 27 gauge needle which I would bend and that worked fine until you perforate Desmase. So there are now uh, several uh, blunt cannulas or dalk cannulas which allow you to tunnel uh, just beneath the stroma and to get within about 100 to 150 microns and so it's blunt so that it, there is minimal risk of perforating Desmase and that means you can go closer with a little bit more safety. Uh, that has been a very important aspect uh, because it solves the other second big problem in DALC, how do you not perforate? The best way I think to use uh, my uh, DALC cannula is, well firstly it is blunt tipped and it's uh, got a wide opening so you can inject a lot of air and it's beveled down but you've got to get it just within the stroma so once you've removed the first half of the cornea, you've got about maybe 200, 250 microns, just have a very superficial stab wound with, with a 27 gauge needle. That just gets your cannula just beneath the stroma. Then you can use your cannula and tunnel uh, a length, maybe about just one or two, maybe three millimeters into the central cornea. Then you're in the right position. Now, the other instruments that we have uh, which I, which I, uh, I had the honor of, of helping to, to, to design is I have two other instruments for doubt. One is the doubt scissors. Now, once you've got the big bubble and you've burst the bubble, you've now got to remove the stroma, which is just above decimase. And I've many times ruptured decimase while I put in a sharp tip scissors. So what we've done is the the, the, the curved scissors and the right and left dark scissors are, they have uh, firstly blunt tips, that's the first thing. Then the superior tine of the scissor is a bit shorter, so there's less risk of you perforating decimase. And the third aspect, which is probably the most as important and that's I think quite unique, is that your inferior blade of the scissor now has a, uh, a uh, horizontal platform so that as you put the scissor on Desimase, you glide on this and the platform holds away Desimase, holds it down while you're cutting the stroma above. And that has meant that now it's a lot safer to cut the stroma around at, the, at your trephination margin without perforating. There is one more instrument which I call the marginal dissector. This is shaped like my fist, but obviously a lot smaller. And it's like a knuckle, uh, it's blunt tipped and that's to separate any remaining stromal fibers which are at the periphery. As you get the bubble, as you separate there, the edge of separation will have some stromal fibers and this is usually at the trephination margin. So we use that marginal dissector just to free away any remaining remnant stromal fibers so that you can cut the tissue around with the dark scissors. That marginal dissector actually is very interesting. Sometimes when you don't get the big bubble, and you've tried many times, we will carry on it uh, with one more stromal dissection and we're now dissecting manually very close to decimates. You, you can use this marginal dissector which is blunt and separate the residual stroma from decimates in a pre-decimatic manner with, these, with this marginal dissector. So that's another useful way to use this uh, dissector. So with these three instruments, I think it makes uh, the, the big bubble surgery a lot safer and more importantly, it allows more people to get the big bubble 
and uh, have success with this procedure. I think the first thing is to get the big bubble and that's the big challenge. Uh, the concept should be is that if you can get your needle to inject air as close to Decimase, as Decimase membrane as possible without perforating Decimase, you will get the big bubble almost all the time. Now that means you've got to get it, your, your cannula or your needle within about 100 or 150 microns. Uh, before you get the bubble, otherwise you just get stromal hair. So that's the key factor here. Uh, what we've done to modify uh, Anwar's uh, original procedure is to first perform the anterior stromal removal manually before you inject the bubble. So you can do that with a variety of lamella dissectors. What you're doing is you're halving the thickness of the cornea. So if your cornea is about 500 microns or so, once you remove the anterior layer, you're left with about 200 250 microns. Now that means that if you inject air now just within that stromal layer, your needle or your cannula, your opening is right within about 100 to 150 microns, which is perfect to get bubble. So I think that's a major modification. It's made it a lot easier for us to get the bubble, you know, 80-90% of the time now. I think it's quite uh, daunting when you first start doing DALC. Uh, most of us are used to PK and you do that a lot faster. Uh, DALC is surgically more challenging, there's, there's a risk of rupture, you can't get the bubble. So I would suggest the easiest way to start off and to get going with the learning curve is to select a patient that you're already going to do a PK, right? But instead of just going ahead with a PK, try the DALC first. So you've got donor tissue, this patient knows you're having a PK, but when you're doing the surgery, try the lamella dissection. Try a cannula, uh, try to get that air bubble injection, and if you have it, that's fine. Then you break the bubble and you continue with the PK. So this gives you the confidence, in case you rupture, no big deal. You know, uh, in case you don't get the bubble, no big deal. But you get the feel of the tissues, you get the feel of lamella dissection, uh, how, do, how it feels to get the big bubble and when you rupture it, etc. So I think that's a useful tip um, and uh, that's what I would recommend for anybody who wants to convert from a PK to a DALC. I think DSEC, like many of the other procedures that we do today, um, is, is all about surgeon control. The more that we can control the tissues during the surgery, the safer it is, the more predictable surgery becomes. So DSEC is really about, in many instances, control of the donor. Uh, the original tackle folding technique, you get good control, but you damage the endothelium. Uh, the newer inserters now still provide a certain measure of control, but with reducing endothelial cell damage. Uh, the uh, inserter that we use, which is a a, a pull-through glide principle. The importance is that because you're holding onto the tissue with uh, DSEC forceps and you pull the tissue into the eye, you're still holding onto the tissue. And therefore, there is no risk of donor inversion or the donor uh, moving around the eye as much. You've got control. So that's very important. And um, I think that's the advantage of those uh, pull-through inserters. Uh, which was actually originally suggested by Massimo Busin. Uh, but that glide principle where you're pulling donor in, holding onto the tissue whilst you're manipulating the rest of the surgery is very important. And that's a key aspect to uh, safer DSEC surgery. The other principle which also affects control is control of the anterior chamber. Whenever we put tissue in, you open the wound, you may get it get an AC collapse. If you use an AC maintainer, if your AC maintainer is on too high a flow, then you can get uh, iris prolapse or the tissue may shoot out. Um, our, uh, our method for inserting the donor was to use a disposable inserter, uh, which is the endoglide, uh, which has got a back plate as part of the handle. So we wanted to make it as, to be frank, as idiot proof as possible. And that means using something which we can use reliably all the time and safely. But the principle of the endoglide is based on a uh, USB 
stick or a thumb drive. And the idea was to allow the surgeon to put something into the eye, control the eye when he's doing so. And uh, the main difference from other glides or other inserters is that it, it has a sealed chamber throughout. You can use an AC maintainer and there is no flow. Your left hand is holding the tissue, pulling it in. Your right hand is controlling the eye and you've got a closed system. So with this, I think we've been able to show a rel you know, fairly respectable endothelial cell loss in the range of about 13 to 15% at one year, which is actually quite a bit lower than most of the other published studies. The forceps that you use and how you use it is also important. Um, unlike the tackle, which you have to fold tissue and you, you compress and you, you damage the tissue, of course the forceps that you use has to grasp the donor. So one may be concerned as to whether when you're holding the donor are you damaging an epithelium. I think the, with the uh, forceps that we have, it's possible to grasp just the stromal edge and not grasp the endothelial surface. And so you're holding the stroma itself and uh, that allows you to manipulate the tissue right through from the outside into the eye, but you're holding on to just stroma. So in this way, there is minimal endothelial damage. DMAC is a different ballgame. You know, I think we have more or less solved DSEC at the moment. And uh, the key really is that today, uh, most surgeons can learn how to do DSEC in a relatively short time with a reasonably short learning curve. Um, when you are quite comfortable with DSEC, then there are other challenges. Most people are now trying to put in thinner donors or ultra thin DSEC. That is a bit more challenging. And so after you've done basic DSEC, then you can graduate to more complicated cases or uh, perform ultra thin DSEC. However, when you now think about DMEC, which potentially can have major advantages. I mean, DMEC has, uh, has uh, it's pretty well established that you get better visual quality. Uh, almost certainly it looks like there's going to be less rejection, but the surgery is very different. It's a lot more challenging to handle pure desmase membrane with endothelium. And it's again all about control. One can control a thick donor with no problems. One can control a slightly thinner donor with a little bit more uh, of a learning curve. But it's a very different aspect in trying to control a pure layer of desmase with endothelium. Desmase wrinkles up, it scrolls up, and it always scrolls up with the endothelium outside. And if you touch it, the cells die. You can't touch the stroma because there's no stroma. So we looked at DMEG and how do you solve these problems? You want tissue which you can handle, you can't at the moment. You want tissue which doesn't wrinkle and you want tissue which you can manipulate and make sure it doesn't scroll up. We've come up with a, a new concept for DMEG surgery where we're replacing back that stromal carrier with an artificial polymer mat. So imagine now you've got decimase and you strip decimase away. We now place decimase endothelium up on a carrier mat. And because the carrier mat is larger in diameter, it means then that we can now handle the mat and not decimase. Also, because the mat is flat, decimase won't wrinkle up and you can now coil or roll that mat and decimase will roll. So we've just tested this now. We've done nine patients where we have uh, laid out decimase on what we call the decimase mat, or the D mat for short. We use that to coil into the endoglide, introduce endoglide into the eye. And very interestingly, what we're now doing is that when we're pulling decimase in, we leave the mat there and we just pull decimase into the anterior chamber. And there's still a fair amount of manipulation because it's still decimase once it goes into the eye, but we prevent scrolling. We're still controlling decimase by holding on to the DSEC forceps. Now that solves the latter half, but don't forget of the procedure. But DMEC, DMEC also involves the challenge of stripping the donor. And the main problem is that uh, it's more difficult to strip the donor. There's a higher tissue loss rate, either decimase will tear 
or uh, you actually not get a complete uh, a stripping of decimates. And that needs to be solved as well. There are now techniques where the tissue is submerged in Octisol and we use various uh, forceps to strip this, but I think it can be easier. We're looking into uh, new instruments to help you to dissect or to strip decimates all the way around without too much risk of tearing uh, tissue. And one aspect is how do we go all the way around and se separate the peripheral edge of decimates from the cornea. So there are some instruments which we're working on now which will make it a lot easier, hopefully, for us, for eye bank technicians and for surgeons to strip decimates without causing too much endothelial damage. I think from the surgeon point of view, uh, most surgeons would generally prefer to have their tissue prepared for them. So whether it's dissect tissue or demec, that they receive the tissue already uh, pre-dissected and pre-cut. Um, ergonomically, that makes sense. It reduces the, uh, the uh, operating theatre time, which will you know, uh, also save cost. Um, however, the eye banks then have that added responsibility now of tissue processing, making sure that the pre-cutting of tissue is, does not affect the endothelium. And for DMEC, there are you know, significant surgical challenges there. Um, I think it all depends on, on the, whether you work in an institution where you can cut your own tissue, whether you have a bit availability of, of uh, a good eye bank who can do this. I think we're right in the middle of a really exciting trend now in cornea surgery. For decades, we had really essentially one operation, and that was penetrating keratoplasty. We now have a plethora of new selective lamellar procedures. We can replace just the stroma, like in DALC, or we can replace just decimase and endothelium, like in DMEG. Now, uh, that brings new challenges. Uh, the technology has to get better, the instruments have to get better, and I think there are new tools now. Uh, certainly, the surgical instrumentation is changing. Uh, the availability of the femtosecond laser is very interesting. I think, uh, I predict that uh, with time, uh, we will be able to use femtosecond lasers to perform lamellar surgery uh, with more predictability and safety. LASIK has been, for many years now, the gold standard for uh, corneal uh, refractive surgery. Um, and it's a very safe and effective procedure. On the horizon is a related procedure, uh, which we call RELAX, or refractive lenticular extraction. It uses the same femtosecond laser, in this case, the Visumax laser from Carl Zeiss Meditech. But instead of just cutting the flat, this treatment now not only cuts the flat, but also a refractive lenticule within the stroma, which is then removed. Once you do this, then it means then we can actually create a pocket incision and just remove the refractive lenticule through a very small incision, which could be as small as two and a half millimeters. This now transforms uh, the refractive procedure into essentially a flapless type of procedure. And this is now possible today. I think that's a very exciting challenge. Uh, not having a LASIK type flap means the eye is a lot stronger. Very importantly, because you don't have a side cut which covers most of the circumference of the cornea, you may actually get less dry eye, or neurotrophic keratitis, um, and there are less flap related complications like aberrations, and loss of contrast. We're beginning to see that in the early studies of the procedure which we call SMILE, small incision lenticular extraction. However, that also brings new challenges. Instead of just simply lifting a normal LASIK flap, the surgeon now has to uh, be able to perform lamellar dissection through a small incision above and below that refractive lenticule so that we can extract it. And uh, uh, I've been uh, privileged to design some of the new instruments for this micro lamellar dissection that we're doing for SMILE.